Hello booktube, this is Aaron from Aaron Read a Book or Aaron Read a Book. Um, I'm going to do the top 10 Star Trek tag today uh, for Tag Tuesday. Um, this was created by Steve Donahue. Uh, I'll leave the link below to the original. Um, and it's for Book Trek, so let's get going. Number 10, Requiem for Methuselah by Jerome Bixby. Would you live forever if you could <clears throat> um i would uh, actually I, I was in an interview last week and they asked me what my my superpower would be if i could choose one one of those silly interview questions and i i, I chose immortality because um i'm scared of heights and speeds and everything so it, it seems like the best thing i could go for um i suppose it depends on what happens at the end of the universe as well. Um, does it reset or are you stuck in nothingness forever? Um, it might, I would like it to be like this book, which is a, is an old sci-fi book, Olaf Stapleton Star Maker. Uh, in this, he gets um, sort of sucked up into a collective and they just fly around the universe observing species. So it'd be fun if it was like that. Um, if if you were stuck on Earth and the Earth ended, you might have a few boring billions of years waiting for the universe to reset. But yeah, I, I think I'd go for it. I can't resist it. Um, Balance of Terror by Paul Schneider. What are some of your favourite novels about unlikely friendships? Have you ever had one yourself? Um, the first thing that came to mind is a great book, 84 Charing Cross Road by Helena Hemp. So this is um, a book about um, a New Yorker um, uh, just after World War II. She writes to a bookshop on Charing Cross Road in London um, because she can't get the books she wants anywhere in New York. Um, I don't know why, but I guess they they didn't have sort of old books then. Um, I, 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 I know some people still like to get their books from England because of the covers and the quality of them and stuff. Um, and it and it was cheaper for her to get them from London than, than to source them in the United States. Um, and this is like a series of letters. They started, they made, she made friends with everyone in the bookshop, in this bookshop in Charing Cross Road and for like wrote to them for 20 years and it's, um, the main friendship was between her and the owner Frank. Um, it's a it's all true story in letters, and but Helena Hemp's a really funny character, and um, um, Frank is a bit sort of a stuffy English bloke, but um, she like makes friends with them by sending them stuff because they're still rationing in the UK, and and to, they can't get sort of nice food. Um, I suppose I've had I have some slightly unlike unlikely friendships and one of my best friends is 10 years younger than me um also another one of my friends is in his 60s he's just retired um but both of them would just have a lot in common and like a lot of the same things so it's not really that unlikely is it um the naked time by john black what would an uninhi uninhibited you be like um i have a lot of inhibitions um I suppose when I've been very drunk, I've come close to it, but I'm still, I'm still quite in control when I'm drunk. I don't know. I, I think I'd be very silly, very silly person. Um, Tomorrow is Yesterday by DC Fontana, a fun episode. What are some of your favourite sort of bookish, sorts of bookish fun? Oh, and what is your current go-to for non-book fun? Um, bookish fun? I just like going to second-hand bookshops. I don't really know that many people who read a lot. And um, definitely not the sort of stuff that I read anyway, apart from my booktube. So a booktube's my bookish fun. That's what it is. Uh, non-bookish fun? I do like going to gigs a lot. Um, big into music. I do play guitar, but very badly. Um, I used to really be into movies, but I, I just I I never I never get around to watching them anymore. And um, 
I, I mostly like old movies now, so uh, rather than watch something new, I would tend to just <laughs> re-watch broadcast news or something. Um, but yeah, gigs, music, um, I would go to the odd musical or something if I, if I sit, sit, sit good on London. Basically going to the pub is... It's my non-bookish fun. Um, the Trouble with Tribbles by David Gerald. Another fun classic. Tribbles are basically born pregnant. What is your relationship to the birds and the bees? Do you have kids? If so, how many and how and in what ways do they hate you? And if not, why not? Um, I don't have kids, so well, well, and I don't think I ever will. Um, yeah, not not for me. Not very good with children. The Galileo 7 by Oliver Crawford. What's the most desperate long odds gamble you've ever taken? Um, I've been pretty close to destitution a couple of times. I, um, when I first, I, I lived in New Zealand for a few years and when I first moved there I fell out with my my uh, stepdad. Who, I was staying at my mum and stepdad's house and um, in the middle of nowhere and um, I got so fed up with him that I just said, "Dump me at hostel." So I was I was living in a hostel with no job and no house for a while, but um, quickly got out. And yeah, when I first moved to London as well, I didn't have a job, so that could have that could have got pretty pretty bad pretty quick. But always always found a way through. Uh, Armok Time by Theodore Sturgeon, an episode that deals with a knockdown fight. Do you have any experience in unarmed combat, ever been in a fight as an adult? Not as an adult, I would say. Maybe as a, te as a teenager. I've got two brothers, so we used to smash each other to pieces if we could. Um, no, I think the last fight I probably had with a stranger would be when I was about 12 or something. So I've, I've, I've never even really got close to a fight. I'm not a very angry or argumentative person. Um, um, if, if anyone's being sort of nasty in a pub, I'll try and diffuse it with humour. This Side of Paradise by DC Fontana and Jerry Soule. More inhibitions being stripped away. Have you ever walked out of paradise? If so, do you ever regret it? Uh, like I mentioned before, I, did, I lived in New Zealand for a few years and... Um, I loved that, and I, that was that was paradise to me. It's such a beautiful place. Like, just um, one thing I just miss about it is just walking around. You can see mountains in the background and stuff. It's very relaxing, rather than in London where it's skyscrapers. And at least we have old buildings and stuff. That's cool. But um, yeah, New, New Zealand was my paradise, and I didn't really, I say walk away, but um, my visa ran out, so I had to leave. Um, although I didn't regret it instantly because the day I left Christchurch, I live in Christchurch in New Zealand, um, was the day of the the earthquake. So I, I went to Cyprus and when I landed there I saw there was a massive earthquake. Luckily I don't think anyone was really hurt in that first one. But six months later there was an aftershock that um, destroyed my work and my house that I lived in so I would have been <laughs> homeless and jobless then again so I didn't regret it instantly but um and again like I could I would never if I went back I, it wouldn't be the same because a lot of the people I knew moved away from Christchurch after the earthquake and stuff like that so um I do miss the scenery though and just the sort of chilled out atmosphere and I love I love kiwis. Um, Who mourns for Adonis? Adonis? I don't know what that is. By Gilbert Ralston. Grief myth retellings are still all the rage. Do you have any favourites? I'm I'm going to directly contradict Steve here, and um, go for Circe by Madeline Rinner. Um, I do love the Song of Achilles, but uh, I preferred this one when I read it. But it had been a few years since I read. Song of Achilles, so maybe I should do a back to back. Also, when I read both Song of Achilles and um, 
Circe, I hadn't read the Iliad at that point. And now I've read the Iliad, I really want to go back and reread the Song of Achilles. But yeah, I really liked Circe. I guess I wouldn't be annoyed by any sort of changes they made. Um, because I don't know the original myth, so uh, yeah, I do have I have Robert Graves' Greek myths. I should read that, and uh, or Stephen Fry's one, um, or just the originals themselves. I guess if they're around, um, but yeah, I really loved Circe. I thought it was great, and like such a beautiful edition as well, beautiful cover. Um, last question: City on the Edge of Forever by Harlan Ellison. What is the best book you've read this year? Um. I'm going to go with, uh, I've banged on about this quite a lot, The Light Years by Elizabeth Jane Howard. Um, more, I've read the first four books of this five book series, it's more for the series in general. Um, I just love her writing, she's such a beautiful writer and um, I love family sagas so this has been my favourite so far. But there's, there's been some great books. Okay, booktube, that's all for today. Um, I'm not going to tag anyone else, but because everyone's seen, I'm sure everyone's seen Steve's original video. But I would, this is a this is a fun tag, and you don't really need to know anything about Star Trek to do it. So, hope some more people do it. See you later, booktube.